Hey everybody, this is Stellar Firefly, and in this video tutorial, we'll take a look at installing another popular DAISY Epic add-on called Snap Building Pro. Because of its popularity, and because the steps for installing it are different than the previous tutorials for DZ AI and DZMS, this is a good third add-on for new admins to learn about. And, as we'll see, it's also very easy to install. The key difference in the Snap Building Pro add-on's installation is that it doesn't make use of the PBO at all. It uses a second common method for installing customizations outside of the PBO structure. Because of this, the steps that we'll be following will again be fairly specific to GTX Gaming DAISY servers. Other providers may have a similar setup because it's fairly common, but we won't be going over the details of how exactly to create the setup if your provider hasn't done so already. Let's begin. The first step, as always, let's download the Snap Building Pro add-on itself, and also check out its installation instructions while we're at its website. We'll start at the very beginning with a Google search, and we see that the very first hit goes to its forum thread on epicmod.com, and the second goes to its GitHub project page. If you're not fully familiar with the mod itself yet, I always recommend going to the epicmod.com thread first, but then when we scroll down a bit, we quickly find that the GitHub link is there anyway. But because the link is directly from the epicmod.com thread, we know that it's legit. So let's click on it and head to GitHub. As usual, we'll click on the Download Zip button at the far right to grab the latest version. Then, we'll scroll down a bit to check out the installation instructions and note the differences from what we've seen before with DZAI and DZMS. First of all, Snap Building Pro makes no mention of our server.pbo file, and so we won't be touching it at all. But it does begin its instructions with create and add a new compiles.sqf file, and in parentheses you can reuse an old one if you already have it, and add this to init.sqf file, and so on, and then a bunch of instructions. We're actually going to ignore that for now, and we'll see exactly why later. Further down, we see that the next three steps involve editing that compiles.sqf file, then editing a file called description.ext, and then copying a folder called snap underscore pro into a folder called custom. Alright, let's go to our server and see what this all means. We'll open up our TC admin control panel and make sure that our server is stopped. We can't make changes to a running server. We'll click on the file manager icon to open it up. In the file manager, Navigate to the folder MP Missions, then daisy underscore epic underscore 11 dot chernaris, or, of course, to the folder where your own current map is if it isn't chernaris. Already we can see here two of the files mentioned, init.sqf and description.ext, and also the custom folder beneath them. And here's the reason why we ignored the very first part of the installation instructions. On your GTX Gaming DAISY server, it's already been done for you. If we open up the init.sqf file and scroll down a bit, we can see this line. Call compile preprocess file line numbers for custom slash compiles.sqf, which is what the instructions asked us to add. So we'll just click on the cancel button at the top and move on to the next step. For the next step, we'll click on the custom folder to open it up and find the compiles.sqf file and click on the pencil icon across from it to open it up in the text editor. Now let's head back to the GitHub page so that we can copy what we need to change into our clipboard. It's just way easier and much less prone to mistakes if we copy and paste instead of trying to type it all out again ourselves. We'll select these five lines right here that it wants us to add to our compiles.sqf file and copy them to our clipboard. Then we'll go back to our File Editor tab and scroll all the way down to the bottom. Now it says to paste those lines at the very bottom, and that'll actually work just fine. But just to be a good coder, we'll actually paste them right above this very last line, initialized equals true. Just because, really, we haven't technically initialized everything until after our instructions are executed. And as always, I like to put a brief comment just before our changes, so that later on I can see exactly what was done. Don't forget to click on the Save button at the very top to save your changes, and make sure that it says that the changes were saved. The next change the instructions ask us to make is an edit to the description.ext file, which is one directly level above us, so we'll click on the double dot folder to move back up. We'll find the description.ext file, and click on the pencil icon across from it to open it up in the text editor. Once again, we'll swap briefly to our GitHub tab, and find the text that it wants us to add so that we can copy it to our clipboard then swap back to our text editor tab. It wants us to add the new text to the very bottom, so we'll scroll down all the way and then paste that line in. Again, don't forget to click on the Save button at the very top and make sure that it says the changes were saved. 
The final step in the instructions is to copy the snap underscore pro folder into the custom folder. We'll find our downloaded snap build pro zip file and open it up. Go into the snap pro dash master folder and then the custom folder. Then extract the snap underscore pro folder somewhere, like our desktop. Then we'll fire up our FTP client and connect to our server. Navigate into the MP missions, daisy underscore epic underscore 11 dot shernaris, or your own map instance folder, and then into the custom folder. Now we'll just upload the snap underscore pro folder right into here. The folder is really tiny, like 46k or so, so it should upload in no time. And that's it. As always, I recommend at this point that you start up your server again and test it to make sure that your new add-on is working correctly before doing anything else. That way, if you encounter any problems, then you can be fairly sure exactly what's causing it. And because this add-on's installation was very easy and straightforward, then if anything does go wrong, then chances are that it was something very simple, like a typo or maybe forgetting to save your changes, or possibly an incompatibility with another add-on or mod, if you have any others installed. Thank you all for watching. Please don't hesitate to like or subscribe if you feel so inclined, and I hope that this tutorial was helpful to some of you. And as always, good luck, have fun, and watch your back.